guys uh, please confirm to me all of you get me voice on the screen those who are attending in online please confirm to me guys guys please check it all of you get me voice on the screen guys please confirm to me all of you get me voice on the screen those who are attending in online am i audible Guys, please confirm to me. Hello, fair get me a voice on the screen. Mm, right, right, right. All right. Good morning, guys. and uh, so what we are discussing there actually we are discussing about java features the topic okay so let's wait uh, two more minutes of time right members will come right and uh, before that so i think you are already aware about our schedules clearly on monday onwards we are going to discuss about object orientation at 8 30 8 30 to 10 you have to attend their object orientation i am going to start parallel to this class so this 10 to 11 30 class is going on up to the next 15 days of time i'll complete it but meanwhile parallelly you have to attend the classes at 8 30 to 10 o'clock continuation up to the end of the course object orientation i am going to start okay so don't worry if any of you are new today maybe up to now whatever the classes i completed i'll give that videos classes there you can attend the classes through video then you can continue these classes today onwards so everything you will understand clearly one time if you watch that video everything is very much clear for you no need to worry for it okay then uh, so Monday onwards, we are going to attend two sessions, 8.30 to 10 and 10 to 11.30. So, what I am telling to you, three hours of class at a time, it is not possible. So, 8.30 to 10, I will take one and a half hour class. Then after that, I will give 10 to 15 minutes break. Then after that, one hour, 15 minutes class, I will take next. So, second class will be in one hour, 15 minutes. But first class is in one hour, 30 minutes. As it is exactly... By 8.30, I'll start the session, whatever may be the case. Maybe I'll come to the class before 5 minutes, max. So in the same way, you have to come to the class before 5 minutes, okay? And uh, very soon, those who are in uh, packages, basic Java package, complete Java package, and full stack Java, those who are in these packages, no? Very soon, we are providing UI classes for you user interface sessions the topics basics of ui like html css javascript uh, css like bootstrap jquery yeah, these classes basic classes are going to be stored very soon i'll give time i will give schedule also for that at what time we are planning for that uh, classes there ui classes no max the timing will be 11 30 to 1 11 30 to 1 o'clock i'll plan for it maybe one hour or one and a half hour class that i will give clarity for you once again with the date and the time time is almost all fixed like 11 30 to 1 o'clock is the timing there uh, but date when it is going to be short very soon maybe we can expect it within 10 days of time you can expect that class so parallelly you are going to start all the classes and moreover we are planning to start the crt classes also right for the sake of the freshers like aptitude reasoning and soft skills and this kind of batch also we are going to start but uh, for full stack people for full stack java package people that class will be included automatically but for remaining members that might be 
uh, might be extra topic only that we have to register separately that's one thing and anyway then price of that course don't mind for it why because after pandemic just a matter of three months of time we started three to four months of time we completed to start this institute well, already we started within three to four months of time only after pandemic so first time we are launching that that is crd classes that's why uh, price for that crd class will be very very low we are trying to maintain in the, for the first batch next batch onwards automatically the price is going to be increased anyway but behalf of durga soft definitely some advantage we want to provide our uh, students that means in-house students inside durga soft for everybody we want to give some benefit regarding that classes no so wait for it then what will be the benefit for that wait for it i'll announce that again inside the classes now but anyway we are planning to conduct a crt classes also in the point of freshers that is one thing and uh, coming to my classes up to now we understood some topics we are continuing these classes there as per my level best i am teaching all these points and of course as per your level best you are understanding these topics now good going on smoothly the content is going on no no need to worry for this up to my classes you are going to understand everything up to my classes i will give recorded videos also for each and every class for each and every class recorded videos are also be provided so we are going to provide these recorded videos through google drive access so in general what is going to be happen previously this problem is not available but at present when we upload that video up to 24 hours of time it is showing in uh, not in play mode it was in not in play mode actually up to 24 hours of time max but one day if you pass there then definitely that video will be ready to watch so anyway just it may take some time depends the 24 hours is also depends in some days immediately that video is ready to play in some other days maybe it may take some time get just adjust for it anyway i'm giving assurance to you one year of time here officially we provide some boundary for that videos access but what i give an internal intimation to my office people just upload that videos don't delete them even after one year of time let them to see how much time they require so almost all internally uh, i give an intimation to my admin people let them to leave it that's it just uh, upload the video just leave it uh, don't delete them how much time they are available in that google drive let them to available like that i give in some kind of intimation there internal intimation for my admin people so max that videos will be available for you for the long time sure about it even after joining with the companies also after joining with the companies also these videos are going to be useful for you so up to my classes i can give assurance about this video classes my part in this packages is like what there core java advanced java hibernate spring spring about microservices and web services this is mandatory for me meanwhile in the future i'm planning for some other classes but not i'll not give any that intimation there but in the future not immediately but as of now my participation in these packages is total java stream java and its associated core java advanced java hibernate spring spring about microservices web services inside these web services soap services and restful services up to that i will take the responsibility remaining faculties are also be very good for us they will take the classes effectively no need to worry for this all of you get my point no i think uh, you are you attending any ui classes there at 11:30 any of you are attending ui classes at 11:30 already one batch is going on don't worry we are going to conduct another batch for ui within 10 days of time that means within 10 days of time that class is going to be started within 2 to 3 days of time i will give intimation maybe back my monday i will confirm the date and the time for it then i'll give intimation to you you can expect this ui classes in the next week even i thought of it we are planning to provide the ui classes maybe next thursday next thursday or friday again anyway, i will confirm it and i will give that intimation to you don't worry for it huh. then apart from this that important thing what i am telling to you at the end of each and every topic max at the end of each and every topic max i am trying to provide on a written test to all of you everybody has to participate in the written test so 30 questions or 40 questions or 50 questions depending on the topic i will prepare one question paper i'll conduct an exam on that particular topic so multiple options questions only everybody has to appear for that exam that's one thing and depending on the topics 
if a three to four topics if i completed no depending on the topics i am trying to conduct mock interviews mock interviews i am going to conduct see i am not conducting any job guarantee program but to get a job what possibilities are available then every possibility i am going to touch recognize this even this type of environment may not be available even in a job guarantee programs also and every topic written test on maximum two to three topics on a separate mock interview i'm planning there by the end of the core java within core java you may appear nearly 30 times 25 to 30 times written test no maybe 10 to 15 times mock interviews that experience is more than sufficient to get job at least uh, if you list out the questions which i'm going to be asked in the mock interviews no if you list out that questions at least that's sufficient to get job in outside but my intention is not to get job in outside getting job is nothing at the end of the course everybody will get job no doubt for that but after joining with the company how we are able to survive how to survive even if we keep four to five years of fake experience in our resume how we are going to survive that is my main concentration inside the classes with my written days with my mock interviews with my written days with my mock interviews if you prepare well for my mock interviews if you prepare well just nothing i am telling that just prepare notes whatever the material i am giving whatever the knowledge i am sharing inside the classes just to prepare that no need to go for anything more than this just if you prepare this damn sure you will get jobs so that's why because of this reason only durga soft had 80 percent success rate in outside for every 100 members 80 members will get job and so my point you know so my intention is not to do any business by announcing like for job guarantee programs like this no but whatever the environment is going in job guarantee more than that we are trying to provide so definitely i will take the responsibility i will take the responsibility of like what i'm telling there i'll take the responsibility to conduct these uh, mock interviews and as well as like what now all this so by this we are going to be prepared effectively for the interviews and all that's one thing what i'm telling to you and uh, other point from your side what i am expecting there regularity is i'm expecting regularity every day class you have to come every written test you have to attend every mock interview you have to attend even you don't know anything about java if i conduct mock interview tomorrow you have to come if you come where if you are not giving any answer for any question i feel very happy just your physical appearance in front of me is sufficient on every interview first interview you will not answer even a single question good nice no problem that is not the crime definitely when you come for a second interview there at least you may give answers for one or two questions good better improvement next the third interview 50 percent of the questions you will answer very good fourth interview 60 percent of the questions you will answer next interview 80 percent of the questions you will answer by moving on to the interviews first of all you may come out from interview phobia interview fear you may come out from that at the same time you will understand what questions are coming in general in the interviews for every question without having any fear you can deliver the answers and effective answers you can deliver effective answers you can deliver so this is an environment i am planning there so try to participate in the events what i am going to be conducted that's maximum more than sufficient for you i am expecting this quality this only this thing regularity every day you have to attend for the class every day we have to understand the content every day when i conduct the written test and mock interviews just try to attend for it whether you are performing well or not secondary but in one event you may not perform well but next event you may perform well next event you may perform better next you will perform perfectly step by step step by step we are going to improve so once you are taken step in durga soft by the end of the course you have to leave from durga soft with the job only otherwise don't leave from durga soft in one batch if you are not understanding up to my classes now up to offline i'm telling i'm giving this word to you in offline if you're not understanding in one batch up to my classes you can repeat next batch also i don't have any problem i can allow in offline classes that that depends on your interest but it is like what they 
attending one class, three class are not attending, and fourth class coming, ten days of gap. No, I will not allow that. Once if you start to attend these classes, no, continuously you have to attend it. Otherwise, don't come for these classes. From my side, I am very much serious. But from your side, how much you are serious? I want to check. Okay, right, guys, right now. <laughs> Mark interviews will be conducted even for online students also. I'll give separate schedule for it. In that schedules, I will go for that mock interviews. Definitely. For both offline and as well as online. I'm thinking about it. Definitely, I will provide this. Right, guys. Anyway, now let's come for our content here. Uh, what we completed there. Java features topic here we understood. We are trying to understand. So, what we understood this topic there. To describe the nature of Java programming language. Java has given a set of features. That set of features are called as like what do you know? Java features. That's okay, fine. How many Java features are available here? No, nearly 12 number of Java features are available. What are the Java features here? Simple programming language, object-oriented programming language, and a platform independent programming language, architectural neutral programming language, portable, dynamic, robust, distributed secure multi-threaded interpretive and high performance that's okay fine already we understood this uh, tell me how can you say java is a simple programming language because of four reasons what are these four reasons now java applications will take less execution time java applications will take less memory java has removed all the confusion oriented features like pointers multiple inner tens, and so on from java applications Java is using all the simplified syntaxes from C and C++. Next one is object-oriented programming language. So, you know already, Java is an object-oriented programming language. Why? Because Java applications are able to allow to represent data in the form of objects by following object-oriented features. So, Java is what there is an object-oriented programming language. Next one is platform-independent programming language. Java is a platform independent programming language. Why? Because Java allows its applications, Java allows its applications, right, to compile in on one operating system and to execute in on another operating system. So Java is what their platform independent. Similarly, Java is an architectural neutral programming language. Why? Because Java allows its applications to perform compilation on one hardware architecture and execution is on another hardware architecture. So Java is an architectural neutral programming language. Java is a portable programming language. Why? Because Java is able to switch its applications from one operating system and one hardware system to another operating system and another hardware system. That's almost all equal to platform independent and architectural neutral. Next one after that, dynamic programming language. Java is a dynamic programming language. Why? Because Java allows its applications to provide Memory allocation for the primitive data at a runtime. Right, sir. Robust programming language. I have given very good reasons for it. So, Java is a robust programming language because of two reasons. What are the two reasons? No, Java has very good memory management system in the form of heap memory management system. What is this heap memory management system? No, it's a dynamic memory management system. It allocates and deallocates memory for the objects at a runtime as per the application requirements. Next one, Java has very good exception handling mechanisms. Java has very good exception handling mechanisms. Why? Because Java has defined very good predefined library to represent and handle almost all the exceptions which are coming frequently in Java applications. For every exception, a predefined library was provided in order to terminate, in order to avoid abnormal terminations and in order to provide smooth terminations. Right, so next one is a distributed programming language. You know already what is the meaning of this distributed programming language, distributed application. If you design and execute any application on the basis of client server architecture by distributing application logic over multiple missions, if you design and execute any application on the basis of client server architecture and by distributing application logic over multiple missions, then that program, that application is called as distributed application. To prepare distributed application, Java has provided a separate part, a separate edition. That edition is what there? J2EE, Java 2 Enterprise Edition. Okay, that we can understand. 
up to this topics we understood clearly all right guys now observe carefully the next topic would be like what there secure programming language secure programming language hmm. all of you observe carefully simple points understand this no before this java whether the java is a secure or not later on we will decide before this when a programming language is a secure programming language i have a programming language when can i say this programming language is a secure programming language clear clear get information understand it if any programming language if any programming language is providing security at internal security web security network security three levels of security are available in general if any programming language is providing security support implicitly web level network level that programming language is treated as a secure programming language that programming language is called as what there a secure programming language now i'm telling to you clearly java is a very good secure programming language how can you say java is a secure programming language what is the reason behind this answer is very clear try to understand this answer all of you guys observe carefully who is executing java programs no obviously jvm jvm is executing java programs nice if i open jvm where five or six top level components are available if i open jvm inside the jvm you can see five or six number of top level components what are these top level components inside this jvm first class loaders I'll try to remember them even not remember no issues class loaders next one is byte code verifier byte code verifier third one an interpreter interpreter jit compiler jit jit compiler just a in time compiler garbage collector garbage collector sixth one security manager sixth one is what security manager overall six top most elements are available inside the jvm what are these top most elements no first one is class loader first one is what class loader second one is byte code verifier second one is what byte code verifier third one is interpreter next one is jit compiler jit compiler just in time compiler next one is garbage collector garbage collector sixth one is what there security manager this is security manager inside the jvm is providing internal security inside the java programs when byte code is being loaded security manager will check whether this byte code is a right byte code or not with the help of byte code verifier security manager will implement some security policies over the byte code whether this byte code having any misformations or not right compilers are generating this byte code or not that every checkup is going on by every checkup is done by security manager with the help of byte code verifier so implicit security point of view java is providing very good security with the help of security manager inside the jvm by this we can conclude java has provided or java is providing very good implicit security java is providing very good implicit security why because jvm has internally security manager and a byte code verifier with the help of byte code manage with the help of byte code verifier security manager is providing implicit security inside the java good all of you are getting clarity implicit security security manager inside the jvm so java is very good at implicit security leave it number 2 web security what is this web security actually what is the meaning of this web security web security is nothing but authentication and authorization mechanisms web security is nothing but authentication and authorization 
So first of all, at least some information. What is authentication and what is authorization? At least little bit information here we have to understand. Right, sir. I'll give some clarity. Try to understand this. All of you know. What is authentication and what is authorization? Simple example. I think you completed academics in our colleges. Yes, sir. Am I right? Still, any of you are in academics? Any of you are in B.Tech or any of you are in uh, MCA? Like this, doing MCA or doing B.Tech? Any of you are available? Raise your hands, please. Okay. Nice. No issues. All right, sir. Might be remaining members. Might be you completed. By the way, I want to ask one question to all of you guys. How many of you wants to put your resume freshers like a fresher resume? How many want to have trials in outside as freshers? How many of you wants to join with the companies as a fresher? Please raise your hands. As a fresher, how many of you wants to join with the companies as a fresher? Please raise your hand. Full hand, I required. Nice, almost all of you. Any of you wants to put some experience? Nobody. How, any, how many of you wants to put some experience in your resume? Nobody. Please raise your hands. No need to feel anything shy here. One, two. Uh, right, only two members. How much experience you want to keep? How much experience? Two years or three years? Two years of experience. Please don't, don't stand. Please sit down. In my class, there's no formalities. You are my customer. Myself is a service provider, right? Right, of course, your student and myself is a teacher. Right, that is okay. Then, then how much you want to put experience? One year of experience. Nice, good. So, anyway, then time is, uh, time is coming. That's why I'm talking about it, no? Sincerely, I'm advising to all of you. I'm suggesting to all of you. If you have at least six months of gap in our academics by the completing of your academics and till the date at least if you have six months of time try to put that six months of time as an experience in origin don't go as a fresher uh, sincerely i'm telling you i am not saying any fake information just reality i'm telling you if you have at least six months of gap between present date and your academics when you completed your exam six months of time if you have try to put that six months of experience in our resume i'll give multiple advantages for this you may you may have one coach in your mind sir you are trainer but why you are saying this kind of a fake experience and all so if you are not giving that fake experience in outside market 70 percent of the people are doing the same fake experience i will tell some advantage then after that you will understand why i'm telling that in my classes i am going to be cover java for the people those who want to keep a four to five years of experience also not only for freshers along with you my knowledge level i am going to give four to five years of experience knowledge with my knowledge you can keep comfortably four to five years of experience that's what i'm telling to you point number one so you are going to be prepared up to the people those who want to keep four to five years of experience of course if you are the fresher definitely you'll have very good knowledge with my knowledge, you can keep four to five years of experience. That is one point. Here. Leave it. Even that is also not my main point. But my main point is what there. If you apply for any job in outside, job portals are available. If you upload your resume in a job portals as a fresher, as one year of experience a person, if you upload the resume, as a two years of experience, if you apply for the jobs in a in the form of resume in a job portals, like similarly three years of experience. So fresher, one year, second year, third year. That means first fresher, one year of experience, two years of experience, and three years of experience. If you apply these resumes like this, who will get more number of calls from companies and who will get less number of calls from companies there? Freshers will get uh, less number of calls. Three years of experience and persons will get more number of calls from companies. How freshers? recruitments are going on there maximum at the internal reference is that fresher jobs are going to be completed or else companies will go to the colleges engineering colleges or repeated engineering colleges they will visit and they will take the people through campus recruitment in outside walk-ins are very less of course they're available i'm not saying the totally it is a dry no definitely interviews are going on maybe after fundamental after pandemic situation now at present the situation is somewhat good Maybe you can expect in the future freshers are going to get more number of jobs. I have no doubt for that. 
but when compared with that one year of experience person will get more number of calls when compared with one year of experience person two years of experience person will get more number of calls when compared with two years of experience person three years of experience person will get more number of calls that's one thing and one more point i'm telling there one one example i want to say then after that i'll move on to the topic there uh, personally experienced this situation previously two students almost are four to five years back i think so two students came from same village came from same college same classmates they came to my classes after the first demo they understood my content there they met me regularly they are in touch with me the students right from demo class almost all that 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 village is also near to my village at andhra side so some wrapping is available between them and me they are casually they are meeting me then i am giving some suggestions to them then it's going on one find a both the people came to me one find a both the people came to me both of them they said sir i got job today okay then how you got both of them at the time how you got there moreover they said to me we got job in the same company okay then i thought of it i asked one person how much is the salary for one person that person says to me 3 lakh per annum then another person i asked there no i think so you are also be having the same 3 lakh no no sir no no then he said to me he said to me nearly 8 8 odd 8 point something lakh per annum i shocked it why you are the same classmate actually both of you but your salary is 3 lakh but your salary is 8 lakh nearly 8 plus add I, i didn't remember the exactly 8 plus add like this variation is available nearly between them 5 to 6 lakhs difference is there actually by the time i analyzed it i asked them both are same classmates i think they completed mca that's it then i asked both the persons then why this much of difference now have you got have you given any answers in a different way for the interviewer questions like this i have asked the person who got nearly 8 plus uh, uh, salary then both of them no sir no the casual questions only then what you thought inside the class the same thing we answered but why this difference exactly what happened there what they manipulated 3 lakh salary person is there na he applied for the same company as a fresher 8 8 lakh salary is there na he applied for the same company as a 3 years of experience person both of them selected now the situation is 8 lakh person is there na he is a senior software engineer there he is a junior software engineer he has to work under him that 3 lakh person has to work under 8 lakh salary person but both are classmates tell me i am asking to you directly how much you want to have 3 lakh or 8 lakh ah uh, 3 lakh or 8 lakh 3 lakh you want to satisfy with that no uh, you are satisfying with the 3 lakh only what is your age no uh, just i am asking what is your age ah uh, 21 22 maybe 23 don't feel shame on you 21 years only 3 lakh rupees you want to satisfy huh go for 8 lakh salary if it is possible 10 lakh salary 3 lakh salary how much you are getting per month now tell me 25000 huh add 25000 or maybe 22000 like this in between that you are able to get if it is a 3 lakh per 3 lakh salary am i right or not okay 25000 25 years of time you studied for the sake of only 21000 salary at least per year 1000 minimum you required or not 25 years of time you put time for learning process now you are fighting for 15 rupees 15000 salary 20000 salary you are fighting for that where is the meaning of it okay fine at some other time i'll talk more about it but the thing is at least if you have 6 months of gap try to put that as an experience i am sincerely advise you then i will take care about it then how much knowledge you require to keep some experience i will take care about it but the thing is you should be ready to keep some 6 months of experience in origin of course my content is very much utilized for freshers and as well as for all the levels of the people but the thing is if you want to settle properly in earlier mode go and put some experience so i'll give clarity for it don't worry for it now let's come for our content here what i said to you java is a secure programming language 
when java is a secure programming language is no right sir when java is secure programming language is language definitely it has to provide security at three levels am i right or not definitely we have to provide security at the three levels what are the three levels of security guys now tell me first one is a uh, internal security next one is a uh, web security and third one is what no network security java is very good at internal security what is that internal security how java is providing internal security that internal security is java had a security manager inside the jvm to provide internal security so internal security point of view java is very good next one web security web security what is this web security actually authentication and authorization mechanisms huh. let's up to this i need to take one example for it i think all of you might be completed your academics in our college is there good observe carefully one example when you are trying to enter into your college premises when you are trying to enter into your college premises main gate is available or not college main gate where some security post is available or not where security person is standing or not come on guys you have to observe this point clearly so in, in front of your main gate of your college some security post may be existed where security person is standing when you are trying to enter inside the college that security person will stop you he will ask you show your id card if you show your id card that security person will confirm you are related to this particular college he will allow you to enter inside the college for example if you are not having id card no then directly will say to you no you don't have any permission to enter inside the college if you are coming from outside at least show appointment letter to whom you want to meet at least show appointment letter even appointment letter is not available then directly the security person will call to the respective person to whom you want to visit there then they will call them they will get confirmation then only they will allow you inside the college otherwise they will not allow you so this is a first level checkup or not in our colleges first level security first level checkup this is a first level checkup is nothing but authentication this is almost all equal to what there if you want to open gmail your account you want to open the gmail there we have to when we type www.gmail.com immediately we are getting a login page or not username password we are getting or not there we have to enter username and password or not then we click on this login button or not internally your authentication will be checked if you are right user they will allow you to enter inside the website if you are not the right person they will say some information to you you are not authenticated person then better to go for sign up process and so my point what i am telling there so in the same way in our college at a, in front of the gate you will be checked that checking process through id code that checking process through id code is called as what there authentication nice guys okay fine you are authenticated you are authenticated you complete your authentication you entered inside the college uh, then what is your situation inside the college you now where you have to sit there as you are the student what do you have to do directly you have to go to your classroom there you have to sit in, in a chair am i right or not on your bench you have to sit am i right or not you have to sit on your bench that's okay then i'm asking one more question try to answer for it is it possible for you is it possible for you is it possible for you to sit in principal chair at least had a trial on this in your colleges if you go for that if you do th such kind of activity in our college then what will happen uh, principal will come to you will prepare a tc or something else no formalities you will complete next day onwards you will be outside of that college am i right or not so but i want to meet with your principal then you want to meet with your principal then what we have to do you want to meet with him how would is directly will open the principal chamber will open the doors of principal chamber and directly will meet with your principal no is it possible for you no there is a procedure for it what is that procedure there first you have to take an appointment first you have to take what there an appointment you have to take there might be one clerk is available in front of the principal chamber that clerk will give appointment letter for you on the basis of the principal uh, like a time when the time is possible to meet with the principal he will give some appointment for you so we have to take that appointment letter with that appointment letter only we have to go to the principal chamber okay you had already appointment letter you went to the principal chamber when you went to the principal chamber 
where clerk again will take your appointment letter he will check the same time as is the time is available or not whether the time uh, has uh, some appointment or not with respect to this person clerk will check that okay if the time is matched there now the clerk is checking this person is right person or not to meet with principal after that only he will allow you into the principal chamber then you can talk with your principal but already you entered inside the college you know already you are authenticated even though you authenticated you don't have any rights to access some area even though you don't have any rights to enter in some area of your college where again another checkup is available or not to enter into that particular area again another checkup is available or not that another checkup is nothing but authorization for example examination cell is available examination branch where question papers are available answer sheets are available in our internal exams or maybe external exams so many things are available do you have any rights to enter into that examination branch are these people are allowing you inside the examination branch directly no but if you want to talk with the examination branch in charge there there is a procedure there we have to take some appointment through that appointment only we have to enter into the examination branch there we are going to meet with a particular person but you already entered inside the college already you first level checkup is completed second level check up checkup is going on to access some area of your college you need to prove yourself again that is nothing but what their authorization authentication is different authorization is different okay one more example i am telling to you observe carefully another example is what there in your colleges you have a fixed time table do you have any rights to change the time table who are who are having authorization to change the time table administrators of that college are having rights to change the time table am i right or not who are having rights to change the time table administrators are having rights to change the time table am i right or not so that persons are authorized persons to do that at the time of changing the time table again that person's authenticity will be checked that person's authorization will be checked if that persons are right persons to change the time table then only they are allowed otherwise they are not going to be allowed that is nothing but authorization so anyway what i am telling to you if you go for amazon.com amazon.com e-commerce application if you want to place any item in an order your authentication is required username password okay then you can keep an item in an order then we can payment we can complete your payment we will get that product that's okay that is normal way but is it possible for you to modify any items inside the items list no is it possible for you to change the items list inside this amazon for example i am checking for mobile phones maybe 100 mobile phones list we are getting is it possible for you as a guest to change that items list no only some people are eligible to change that item list they are nothing but they are nothing but whom they are nothing but uh, like authorized that means authorized persons administrators they are having authenticity to modify that items list whenever they are trying to check that items no again they are going to be checked uh, that checking is nothing but what their authentication but already they completed uh, uh, other that means they already they completed like what they completed can you know authentication they completed authorization again they have to check already they are authenticated then again they have to check authorization and so my point clear so this is nothing but authentication and authorization process here in every website in every web application security if you want to provide authentication and authorization both are required authorization is required for like what their administrators and authentication is required for everybody for every user of that application authentication is required for authorization is required for only administrators whenever they are trying to do modification in the respective application okay this is what's the meaning of authentication and authorization but java is very good in this particular area java is very very good in this particular area how can you say java is very good in this particular area java has provided a separate middleware service for this authentication and authorization java has provided a separate middleware service for this authentication and authorization that middleware service that middleware service is called as jas j a a s one middleware service was provided by java to provide authentication and authorization that middleware service is what there jas j a a s what is this jas actually j a a s java authentication and authorization service uh, what is this jas actually j a a s 
Java authentication and authorization service. That was provided by that was provided by Sun Microsystems as part of Java to provide authentication and authorization. All of you are getting clarity on these points now. Two levels of security we completed. What are the two levels of security? One is uh, internal security. Another one is what there? Web security. Second one is what? Web security. Clear. Java is very good at these two levels of security. Third one is what there? Network security. Network security. What is this network security? What is the meaning of this network security? Say for example. Listen guys. All of you listen carefully. I have an account in HDFC Bank. My friend has an account in ICIC Bank. I want to transfer some amount of money from my account to do my friend account. Observe carefully. I am interacting with the HDFC Bank application server. HDFC Bank application. My friend account is available in ICIC Bank. ICIC Bank application is available in the ICS server. HDFC server, ICS server. Both are at two, two different places or not? Both are available at two different machines in the network or not? But everything is interconnected. That every machine in the web is connected. In internet, every system is connected or not? Now it is. So HDFC server side application is available at one server machine. ICIC server side application is available at another server machine. Now tell me, when I want to transfer some 10,000 amount from my HDFC account to do my friend's ICIC account. So I have to give some information to the uh, HDFC application server or not. I need to give some information to the HDFC server side application or not. So I have to transfer my username, password uh, and uh, that amount, account details and the amount of amount I want to transfer that everything I have to transfer from my computer to HDFC application uh, application or not through the internet or without the internet through the network or without the network I need to transfer all these details to the network or not come on guys understand my point clearly so the data I want to transfer from my computer to HDFC server mission to that I need to transfer some data the data includes what the data includes what my username Password, account number, uh, pin number, or whatever it may be, amount I want to transfer and send that means a receiver's user to account details. Every information I have to transfer to HDFC server side application through the network. Uh, but observe carefully when I'm transferring these details through the network, when I transfer these many secure information, protected information through the network. There is a possibility for anybody else to see my data in the network or not. If they trace my network now, they can see my data in the network or not. Okay, if my data is transferred as a plain data, plain text data, anybody else can take my data, anybody else can open my account, anybody else can go withdrawal from my account. Possibilities are available. So where, what I have to do, if you want to protect my data, if you want to avoid such kind of um, more factions if you want to avoid such kind of things then what I have to do there Simply I have to protect my data or not how I'm going to protect my data when I submit these account details or secured information Into the network the data has to be transferred over the network The data may be available to the third-party people also, but the data should not be in understandable format The data should not be in a understandable form to the any third person the data must be understandable to the sender and the bank people. Even bank manager, for example, even the bank application. In between, in between sender and bank application, while transferring this data in the network, data may be available to everybody. Anybody else can get the data, but the data should be in an encrypted format. The data must be in which format? There no encrypted format. So here at sender side, we will encrypt the data. When you click on button, submit button, encryption will be started over the data. Encrypted data will be transferred over the network. At the receiver's end, when data is coming to the target mission, where the data has to be decrypted, data has to be decrypted. Encrypted in the sense, I am converting my data into unreadable form. When the data is reached to the target mission there, where decryption will be performed, that means the data will be converted from 
unreadable form through the machine understandable form so here encryption decryption two mechanisms we are going to do or not that two mechanisms are the part of the network security encryption mechanisms and decryption mechanisms are nothing but what their network security so network security algorithms are available number of network security algorithms are available outside what are these network security algorithms in outside no like a bluefish algorithms rsa algorithm shared key algorithm public key algorithm private key algorithm uh, like n number of n number of algorithms are available for encryption and decryption all of you get my point or not so this is the meaning of network security in general so java is very good at network security also java is very good at network security also how can you say java is very good at uh, network security why because java has uh, provided predefined implementations for almost all the network security algorithms as part of its security module java has provided predefined implementations for almost all, all the network security algorithms due to that reason java is providing very good network security for the applications java is providing very good security for the network based applications also that means network security is also be provided by java with the predefined library for this network security algorithms by that we can conclude finally all together by combining all these points what i am telling to you java is a very good secure programming language java is what very good secure programming language guys yeah, just i am asking outlined information now tell me how can we say java is a secure programming language because of three reasons what are the three reasons no implicit security web security network security java is strong in all the three areas so java is what there a secure programming language how implicit security is available because of security manager inside the jvm how web security is available because of jas j a a s and how network security is available because of <clears throat> very good predefined library to implement security algorithms network security algorithms so that java is a secure programming language Guys, all of you are getting clarity on these points, no? No response. Right, so now let's understand this point here. Let me have some small note on it. Java is a secure programming language. Java is a secure programming language. Why? Because, why? Because, number one, point number one, Java is able to provide, Java is able to provide very good implicit security, implicit security, by having by having the component like a security manager inside jvm next one point number two java is able to java is able to provide web security with jas jasness and java authentication and authorization service java is able to provide web security with jas middleware service middleware service in a sense don't think too much about it it is one of the service which is provided by java the third one is like what there java is able to provide network security by providing very good predefined library very good predefined library for almost all the network security algorithms that's it guys now because of these reasons we can conclude java is what their secure programming language because of these reasons we can understand java is what their a secure programming language that's okay fine Ah, let's observe this clearly all of you know next one is what after understanding this point here next one is what there multi-threaded programming language multi-threaded programming language ah. Absolutely, guys. i will give one simple example to all of you by that we can understand clearly the topic no first of all tell me what is a thread what is a thread now tell me right sir what is a thread now tell me flow of execution 
thread is what there a flow of execution that's okay thread is like what there flow of execution nice good is a flow of execution to complete a particular task or to perform a particular task this is nothing but what there a thread okay okay good there are two thread models in general there are two thread models what are the two thread models no single thread model multi thread model single thread model and second one is what there multi thread model what is single thread model what is multi thread model single thread model allows only one thread to execute the total application single thread model allows only one thread to execute the total complete application in that complete application maybe five modules are available five parts are available inside this application but single thread is allowed that thread will execute one module after completion of one module only it will go to the second module after completion of second module only it will go to the third model next only fourth one next only fifth model follow sequential execution over the application when it follows sequential execution automatically execution time will be increased when execution time is increased automatically performance of the application will be reduced come again what exactly the points you understood about single thread model single thread model allows how many threads now only one thread at a time to execute the total application which follows which type of execution sequential execution or parallel execution sequential execution okay fine next one when sequential execution is going on application execution time will be increased or reduced application execution time will be increased when application execution time is increased performance of the application will be reduced but what about this multi thread model actually multi thread model allows more than one thread at a time to execute our application more than one thread is allowed to execute our application at a time when more than one thread is allowed to execute our application automatically parallel execution is going on not sequential execution parallel execution is going on when parallel execution is going on application execution time will be reduced when application execution time is reduced automatically performance of the application will be increased when application execution time is reduced automatically performance of the application will be increased now tell me which model is uh, suitable for us which model is a good model to improve our application performance is that single thread model or multi thread model multi thread model definitely multi thread model is a very good model to improve performance of our applications the thing is java is following multi threaded model to complete our applications execution java is following which model there multi threaded model so when java is following multi thread model then automatically we can conclude java is able to provide very good environment to create more than one thread and to execute more than one thread at a time java is allowing more than one thread to complete our task at a time more than one task will be complete at a time so definitely java is what there multi threaded programming language when it is following multi threaded model when it able to execute more than one thread parallelly when it is improving performance of our java applications there we can conclude java is multi threaded programming language as a simple example i am telling to you by that you can understand clearly assume it today we am i am conducting one exam today i am conducting one exam for example nearly 100 members are sitting in front of me for example 100 members are sitting in front of me for example so what i am telling there only one administrator is available here along with me i given 100 question papers to him i asked him try to distribute all these 100 question papers to 100 members what is trying to do no max he will give paper one to the one person next one is after completing that person only next one paper will be given to the next person next person next person next person like this so for every person giving paper may takes 1 minute of time overall how many minutes of time it will take no 100 minutes of time it will take or not understand this case here so 100 minutes of time i have to wait to start this exam 100 minutes of time that customers have to wait to complete this exam to start this exam this is case number 1 so work i am not satisfied with this with this i am not satisfied why because 100 minutes of time i have to wait to start the exam after distributing papers as answer my point here but alternative i am telling there what is that alternative you know instead of one administrator 
I got five administrators inside the class. I given five sets of papers. I papers are divided into five parts. I given five parts to five administrators. I said to them, try to distribute these five papers at a time. Then immediately, five people are distributing their papers to every student or not? And now tell me, how much is the, how much is the processing time for this now? Previously, for every student giving a paper in the sense like what there one minute of time. Now one person has given so 100 minutes of time he has to consume. But now five persons are working. Five persons are working in the sense how much time it will take to complete the distribution of the paper now. Uh, just in the form of this uh, 20 minutes. You know, just in 20 minutes the total paper distribution is going in or not. Uh, now your processing time is reduced or not. When processing time is reduced, performance of the work will be improved or not. When the processing time is increased, performance of the work will be reduced or not. So that is an advantage of multi-threaded. Multi-threaded. In the case of multi-threaded, multi-threaded execution time will be reduced. Performance of the application will be increased. In the case of single-threaded, execution time will be increased. Performance of the application will be reduced. Fortunate or unfortunate, whatever it may be, Java is following multi-threaded model. When Java is following multi-threaded model, Java application performance will be more or not? Definitely Java applications performance will be more good. So that's why we can understand Java is multi-threaded and its performance is also be very good. Right, so now let's understand this point clearly. So thread, what is this thread actually? Thread is like what there? Flow of execution to perform a particular task. Flow of execution to perform a particular task. That's okay, fine. There are two thread models. There are two thread models. One is like what there? A single thread model. And the second one is like what there? Multi thread model. Single thread model and a multi thread model. Observe carefully. What is this single thread model and what is this multi thread model? Just small information here. I need to specify that. Now observe carefully. Here now tell me how many threads are allowed here? No. Single thread allowed here. Okay, but here how many threads are allowed guys now tell me multiple threads allowed here multiple threads allowed here uh, Now tell me here if it is a single thread follow switch execution sequential execution Sequential execution is going on Here Next one is here which execution is going on there now tell me Parallel execution am I right or not parallel execution is going on here All right, sir then after this now, when it is a sequential execution, execution time situation is what there? Right, sir. Application execution time will be increased. That means instead of saying this, what I am telling there, more application execution time. More application execution time. But here, what about this execution time here? No, less execution time. Less application execution time. That's okay. Then here, when more application execution time is available, less performance is available, less performance to the application. Right, sir. Whenever less execution time is available, then what is the meaning of it? No, more performance to the applications. More performance to the application. That's enough, guys. So these points are available for like what the single threaded model, multi threaded model. But the conclusion here, what I'm telling you, what about this conclusion? No. Java is following multi-thread model. Java is following multi-thread model. It will provide. It will provide very good environment, very good, very good environment to create and execute more than one thread. To create and execute more than one thread at a time. It will to create and execute more than one thread at a time. It will provide very good environment. So because of this reason, we can conclude Java is what there multi-threaded programming language this is one point okay that's enough guys not required to understand more than this this is sufficient now let's observe this next point here what about this next point here now tell me interpretive programming language interpretive programming language now all of you understand this clearly so here the title we provided interpretive programming language but the conclusion is what Java is both compilative and interpretive programming language. Java is both compilative and interpretive programming language. 
why because java is both compilative and interpretive programming language why because right sir i am giving reason number one what is the requirement of compilation no what is the requirement of compilation over any program right to translate program from to translate program from source code to byte code am i right or not to translate program from source code to byte code and to perform error checking yes sir have you remembered these two points now to perform error checking we need compilation so because of this reason we can understand java is a compilative programming language this is one point here. Java is like what is their compilative programming language? Second one is second one is Java is an interpretive programming language. How can you say Java is an interpretive programming language? No. Observe carefully. To execute, to execute Java applications. I'm asking to you who's executing Java programs? JVM. Inside the JVM, who's executing Java program? An interpreter. Inside the JVM, who's executing Java programs? No, an interpreter. So to execute Java applications, we need an interpreter inside JVM. We need an interpreter inside JVM. So, so Java is an interpretive programming language. So the final conclusion here I'm giving there Java is what there an interpretive programming language. But the conclusion is Java is both compilative and interpretive programming language. They're compilative in the sense to translate program from source code to byte code. And to perform error checking, we need compilation. To execute Java programs, we need an interpreter inside JVM. So Java is what there? An interpretive programming language. That's it, guys. No need to think much about it. This is the information here I'm telling you. Next one is last. Last one is like what there? What is the meaning of this last one here? Uh, guys, all of you observe carefully. What is this last one here? No? Uh, last one will be a high performance programming language. Give any reason about java give any reason about java for this point everything is valid everything is valid now let me give conclusion here java java is a high performance programming language why because okay why because instead of saying because you no know, java is an high performance programming language due to it's a rich set of rich set of features due to it is a rich set of features like what features can know what features makes java is a high performance programming language there like we can understand platform independent architectural neutral multi-threaded next one is what there dynamic next one is a portable next one is a secure and so on and so on and so on all these features makes java as a high performance programming language due to its rich set of features that's my point here so because of that reason only we can conclude that java is like what no high performance programming language and people are asking what is an interpreter what is an interpreter that's sir. people are asking to me what is an interpreter nothing sir interpreter is an engine to run java programs simply speaking say for example interpreter is also a translator is also a translator and executor line by line line by line each and every intersection will be executed to execute that line by line line by line we need to go for what there a separate translator the translator is called as an interpreter so interpreter responsibilities are two in java you know already what are the two responsibilities of interpreter inside the java translating byte code to native code executing that native code translating byte code to native code and executing that native code this is a responsibility of the interpreter inside the java so interpreter is a mission which executes java programs inside the jvm in general we used to say jvm is executing our java program that's okay right no doubt for that but inside the jvm who is actually executing our java program no a mission separate mission is available execution engine execution engine is available inside the jvm that execution engine is nothing but what they know an interpreter that interpreter will execute our line by line in a section then as for that whatever the results we are getting that every result will be displayed on a command prompt that's enough totally this is the total awareness on like what there 
uh, high performance and related content and total java features the topic is completed guys all of you are getting clarity in introduction which topics are available java history differences between java and others next one is what there java features then after completion of the java features next next topic is like what there uh, after completion of these java programming format and naming conventions these five topics if i complete total introduction part will be completed on the base of this i'll conduct one written test okay right so anyway i'll give that information there uh, what is token does this token can be implemented in security algorithms see in a security number of algorithms are available depending on the implementations of the algorithms whether these tokens are going to be implemented or not that is going to be decided some security algorithms may not have tokens related content some security algorithms are having tokens related content that depends on the algorithm what we are using for our application on the base of that only we are going to decide whether these tokens are going to be utilized or not but anyway then right now it is not required to discuss up to that level if the time is available then we'll discuss in the future moreover in our course in our course you know core java the security module is not going to be included why because java has provided very good implementations for security but at this level not required to understand maximum people are going to use web level security and a network security content that network security is going to be provided by servers application servers are available inside in our application servers are going to provide that security implementations now so they are abstracted now just we have to understand how to use them that's it we are not going to provide any separate security implementations for security already some algorithms are implemented that algorithms are used by application servers just we have to configure them automatically the security will come to our applications there now that's it that's the, that's the story about this one leave this content guys now i have to start uh, java programming format but before this java programming format now i want to complete now i want to complete like what there java naming conventions first of all let me complete this one after that i will go for java naming java programming format java naming conventions mm, right guys all of you observe carefully okay <coughs> Uh, I'm asking one question to all of you guys. Now try to answer for it. Everybody understand this. Java is a, a case sensitive programming language or not? Java is a case sensitive programming language or not? There is a separate recognition for lowercase letters and uppercase letters. That means what I am telling to you, small a is not equals to capital A. Small a b c is not equals to capital A b c. One letter difference, the case sensitive or case sensitive that we can identify with one level one level difference. So anyway, then point here what I am telling to you, Java is what actually Java is a case sensitive programming language wherein java applications there is a separate recognition for lower case letters and for upper case letters guys observe carefully java is a case sensitive programming language where in Java applications, there is a separate recognition for lowercase letters and uppercase letters. Then whenever we are having this topic like a case sensitiveness, immediately we are getting some question or not in our mind. What will the question here we are getting there? It's okay. It's a case sensitive programming language. There is a separate recognition is available for lowercase and uppercase. That's okay. I understood that. But where I am going to use lowercase and where I am going to use uppercase, that's my question. Where we are able to use lowercase and where we are able to use uppercase. That is my question here. Right, sir. Now, for that, I am telling there to use lowercase letters and uppercase letters. To use lowercase letters and uppercase letters in Java applications, Java has provided the following conventions. What are the various conventions which are provided by Java? Observe carefully that point number one. Everybody must understand this one. Point number one. All Java 
classes names abstract classes names interfaces names all java classes names abstract classes names interfaces names must be started with an uppercase letter and the subsequent symbols and the subsequent symbols must be must also be and the subsequent symbols must also be uppercase letters guys all of you observe this clearly all java classes names abstract classes names then what next one here interfaces names must be started with an uppercase letter and the subsequent letters subsequent symbols must also be an uppercase letter now, what is the meaning of it in the form of some examples here we are going to understand example for example string string is a class name in java it is not like linear data type string is a class name in java the string should start with an uppercase letter that is capital s uppercase letter is available that is started now that is what there capital s only single word is available here single word is available so where started with uppercase letter next one is string buffer for example how many words are available here inside this class name no two words are available what are the two words here no string and buffer in a string s must be uppercase letter in buffer p must be uppercase letter every word must start with an uppercase letter simple rule is what there every word must start with an uppercase letter that is the meaning of classes names from this moment onwards we have to follow the same conventions okay fine now next one is like what there input stream reader how many words are available guys now tell me input stream reader three words are available input stream reader in input i is capital in stream s is a capital and in reader r is a capital input stream reader next one rule number one listen carefully all java variables names must be started with a lower case letter all java variables names must be started with a lower case letter and the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters also guys what is the meaning of this particular point here okay all java variables names must be started with the lower case letters and the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters okay fine nice now examples here i'm telling there variables here i'm telling there in java n is a variable i and n is a variable i should be small out is a variable o should be small err is a variable e should be small next one is two words are available page context how many words are available here page and a context in a page p should be small and in context c must be upper case letter next one is a body content in body content b should be small and c must be upper case letter next one after completion of this for example temp emp addr three words are available just use a different variable i'm telling there in a temp t must be small in every word starting symbol should be upper case letter only first word first letter should be small in every letter should in every word should start with an upper case letter that is a variable convention here we can understand right sir next one point number 3 guys all of you observe carefully point number 3 what is this point number 3 no whatever the rule is available for variable same rule we can apply for methods same rule we can apply for what methods observe carefully all java method names all java method names should start with should start with a lower case letter all java method names should start with a lower case letter but but the subsequent symbols must be but the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters but the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters observe carefully 
all java method names should start with a lower case letter but the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters number of examples are available for example concat is a method how many words are available here only one word is available that the name that word should start with the lower case letter say for example here for name method is available how many words are available two words are available for name in a for f must be small and in the name n must be upper case letter all right sir. next one is after that get input stream how many words are available here three words are available get input stream in get g must be lower case letter in input i must be upper case letter in a stream s must be upper case letter yes, sir all of you are following or not so this is about like what there my third point so all java variables names and methods names should start with the lower case letter but the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters this is one point next one is after completion of this the fourth point is what i am telling to you the fourth point no understand this clearly all java constant variables not normal variables normal variables we can write in any way don't worry for it but constant variables public static final variables are available public static final constant variables all java constant variables must be provided in uh, uppercase letters all java constant variables must be provided in uh, uppercase letters examples here i'm telling there min priority next one is like what there norm priority next one is a max priority in a thread class these are the various constants which are available you can understand min priority norm priority and max priority like this so many class are having so many constants but every constant must be provided inside the uppercase letter that is one point here we have to understand next one is after that that fifth one is guys observe carefully all of you know all java package names must be provided in uh, lower case letters every package name must be provided in a uh, lower case letter you can observe this clearly java.io everything is provided in lower case letter only java.awt.event everything is provided in lower case letter only java .jsp tag ext some package is available predefined package in java 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 x dot servlet dot jsp dot tag exp that everything is provided in the form of like what no lower case letter so all java package names must be provided in lower case letters all java constant variables must be provided in upper case letters then after that what next one here apart from this you know all java methods names should start with a lower case letter but the subsequent symbols must be upper case letters similarly all java variables should start with a, a lower case letter but the subsequent symbols must be in upper case letter all java classes names abstract classes names at next one here after this abstract classes names interfaces names must be started with an upper case letter and the subsequent letters must also be an upper case letter right sir but one small note of a point here i'm telling to you observe carefully listen all of you listen carefully all the above all the above conventions are mandatory for predefined library comma these are optional for user defined library that means what is the meaning of predefined library and user defined library for all the classes and variables methods packages constants which are defined by java these are mandatory these naming conventions are mandatory but for our defined classes our defined variables our defined methods for all of them these conventions are optional these conventions are optional for our user defined library but but what i am telling there these conventions are these conventions are suggestible even for suggestible even for user defined library but these conventions are suggestible even for user defined library so while writing predefined library these conventions are mandatory if you violate them there we are able to get some compilation errors 
but for user defined library these conventions are optional not mandatory without following these conventions you can add program in our own way but if you use user defined library but still there also what i am telling there these suggestions are suggestible these rules and regulations are suggestible even for user defined library why because java has given a culture why don't you follow the same culture for our applications so that's why here i'm telling there clearly these conventions are mandatory for a predefined library these conventions are optional for user defined library but suggestible even for user defined library so this is what exactly the meaning of like what there uh, what i'm telling the content you know naming conventions the topic here we are understanding after completion of this topic the next one is java programming format java programming format the next topic so that i will discuss with you in tomorrow guys tomorrow we are going to see the java naming programming format and uh, one information to all of you as i said to you the class timings there once again i'm telling there tomorrow what will be the schedule 10 o'clock day after tomorrow 10 o'clock monday 8 30 8 30 to 10 which topic i'm going to start object orientation whoops okay 8 30 to 10 object orientation going on and uh, this 10 to 11 30 the class are going on maybe in the next 15 days of time after 15 days of time only one session is going to be available for you that will be like what there uh, object orientation that is 8 30 to 10 o'clock course your remaining part will be covered there that's the thing what i'm telling to you then after a few days of time i'll start advanced java classes at morning time seven o'clock but i will give that schedule to you when i'm going to start advanced java not immediately not immediately we need to have some basics in core java after that only i'll plan for advanced java those are in packages definitely for you i need to provide advanced java advanced java classes may take nearly more than one month of time now from now onwards maybe after the dasara vacation after dasara i may plan for advanced java not immediately why because your knowledge may not be sufficient to understand advanced java I know when I have to start this advanced Java classes and which topic after completion of which topic I'll start advanced Java, then I'll give that information to you. Don't worry for it. So I will take that responsibility in your comfortable time, in your comfortable way. We are going to understand this advanced Java classes. But very soon, very soon, I'm planning for that means I'll provide UI classes for you. Some other trainer will take the classes to you, then see the demo class and continue with the classes there. Those are in packages. Those are in packages, it is mandatory. Those are in core Java. Try to check your possibility. Okay, one minute wait. Right, sir. Then now, uh, after a few days of starting the CUI classes, I'll plan for Aragil classes also. I'll plan for Aragil classes also for online students. I think so. Today is a, today evening. Maybe UI classes are going to be short for online students. Okay. Then fifth one more UI class is available. Just try to utilize it. Anyway, you will get that links and every information to you through mail. So wait for it. You will get it clearly. Okay. And one more thing, guys, I'm telling you. Just listen. Tomorrow, unexpectedly, I don't have any schedule at 8.30 to 10 o'clock. I was free. So what about your situation? Actually, I give a schedule to you tomorrow and day after tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Monday onwards, two slots we have to attend. That's okay. But tomorrow. And a day after tomorrow, in both the days at 8 30, I was free. I don't have any sessions. 8 30 to 10 o'clock, I'm taking mock interviews for them at afternoon time. So, 8 30 to 10 o'clock schedule is free. If all of you are interested, if you want to come for that class also, then I'll take it. Not at exactly 8 30, at least if we come at uh, uh, like uh, 8 45 or maybe 9 o'clock, it will be okay. I'll continue our classes. I'll cover a bit faster manner this topic there Java programming format. No response. I think you understood. Have you understood my question? Uh, what I'm telling to you, are you understanding that? Indirectly, what I'm telling there? On Saturday and Sunday, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, I want to take some special classes for you. So you have to come at what time? 8.30. Better to make it is 8.30. Maybe I may come to the class a bit delay. Don't worry. Uh, 10 to 15 minutes after, definitely the delay is going on. Uh, come at 8.30. 8.30 in the sense, at least at 45, we will start the session. But between uh, both the sessions, I will give 5 to 10 minutes break. Don't worry for it. Guys, if you come, you will get more. Don't worry for it. Then wh what you are going to do there at our class, I might be now outside now.
had to come at 8 30 then i will take our class now tomorrow and day after tomorrow also i want to take your class at what time 8 30 come on come and join with me i'll complete this topic otherwise this topic is going to be dragged up to monday what is the need here uh, we are going to complete this topic by tomorrow and day after tomorrow two sessions if i take no no response guys don't don't miss don't miss the schedule this topic is very very important after completion of this topic directly i will start watch topic what topic there steps to prepare first java application if you want to understand this steps to prepare first java application then we have to come for this java programming format it's mandatory if we give if we come to the class tomorrow at 8 30 i'll give a small surprise to all of you surprise only don't ask me what is that tomorrow i will reveal it huh right sir good nice uh tomorrow day after tomorrow again new schedules are coming there as per our cooperation tomorrow and day after tomorrow at what time we have to come here 8 30 okay but actually monday onwards i thought of it it's 8 30 but tomorrow onwards we can come at what time there 8 30 unexpectedly i was free then whenever i free definitely we are going to connect the class more content we are able to complete it's a very good participation guys i'm telling you if you come to the class tomorrow it will be great of you definitely you are going to understand more i will teach more then both will be satisfied at a particular level okay thank you that's all for today same link for online students same link is going to be happened then try to utilize the same link for online students and tomorrow day of tomorrow thank you thanks a lot tomorrow we'll meet at 8 30. guys for online same link same link tomorrow and day of tomorrow utilize the same link yeah thank you thank you thank you